So here again we're going to be looking at trying to pick a model for these relatively not beautiful looking graphs or distributions of data. So sometimes we've got to think about just what might pick what might fit best here. And so there's not necessarily a right or wrong. It is just a matter of trying to pick off what you think best given the situation. And there might be more than one option that you could use. But we could think about things like Poisson, normal, uniform, triangular, things like that. So one thing to keep in mind is that normal is going to be rather symmetrical usually and it will go off, the edges will go to the extremes in both directions. Poisson, there's usually going to be a limit like the smallest possible. Maybe it starts at zero or at one and it will be skewed and have a long tail off to the side. Um, so your normal Poisson is usually something more like this. I guess maybe not so pointy. Um, and uniform would be rectangular, triangle obviously would look like a triangle, things like that to think about. So here, if we look at this as number one, um, thinking about that criteria, I notice here that it's cut off, so it's not gonna, um, it stops at a zero there, and that it's got a tail off to the one side, so if I think about draping like a dining room cloth or a bed sheet over the top of this data. This is sort of the situation that I have. Um, and maybe it could look slightly triangular to you if you wanted it to, but I think um, that I would probably go with Poisson here. And my reason would be that it's skewed with a clear peak. Now for Poisson, we've got to pick our mean, which we represent with a lambda, and the mean again is probably going to be near the peak. So if I think about where that peak is, it looks like the highest part of the graph is kind of in here somewhere. So I might pick it to be 11 or 12, and I'll probably just go to 12 because it is skewed slightly. So my peak would be um, 12. So you could use lambda equals 12 to calculate with this, now that you've got that information. Looking at graph number two, this one is particularly not exciting. Um, one thing that I would probably notice with this is that it's, you know, n doesn't have a clear distinct peak and it definitely has clear edges. So it's kind of got these walls on both sides. So I'm thinking to myself that this might be something more like a uniform. And so it's definitely got a start and a finish. So we put in the walls of the rectangle here. We just got to estimate roughly what the height would be for this uniform distribution. So if you want to think about kind of visually taking an average between the highs and lows and kind of just putting a line through to represent where you think your average might be for this. Um, and maybe you would pick roughly that. And again, not necessarily a right or wrong as long as you're justifying your answers. If I put my peak, my line for my height up here, um, they might not be as happy with that because it, you know, isn't averaging out what you see throughout the whole graph. It's really only taking into account a few of the highest values there. And again, if you did one that was really low, like down here, again, that's not really matching the top of the graph at all. So I'm trying to look for something that sort of matches the highs and lows. And so this one seems like it might be, might be good. Maybe we could even go to three if you wanted to. So something in there, roughly 0 0.025 to 0 0.03. So here we're going to use our uniform. Um, it's terrible, but no clear peak and um, approximately rectangular. Might be your reasons for it. And so to calculate with the uniform, you would need to predict your height, which is what we're doing here. So we're saying here our height is roughly 0 0.03. And we would take that, and then you could go away and do your calculations. Looking at the next two, um, as an example here, um, this one's kind of a hint for me because they're giving me three distinct values, which might be helpful. Uh, so I'm looking at that thinking, well, it is got a peak. Um, there are three distinct values that they're pointing out. So I might look at this one and say, well, 
not perfect, but what if it was triangular? And so what if we called this A our min, C the mode, and B the max for your triangular formula? And then you could use those values to go ahead and make calculations based on that approximation. Um, and our justifications for this would be that, that you know there is a clear peak and it um, is relatively level between the peaks and the sides. It doesn't have like a little drop off necessarily. Again, not perfect, but you're approximating here. And for number four, this one again I would probably pick off as Poisson. So the reason I'm doing that is because I can see that it has a clear starting point and a really long skewed tail here. So Poisson might do something like so. So I have to pick my lambda again for Poisson, which is roughly where the peak is. And even if I was going to draw this one, I might I might do a slightly different line here. Because I really want to average out what's going on here. So even though that's the highest point, I'm thinking it drops off pretty quick. So maybe my graph should be something more like this. And if I look at that peak, um, we're saying the peak would be here which could be at roughly 8 maybe, half, a little bit less than halfway between. But because I've got this really long skew I might think about moving my lambda slightly higher and maybe putting it up to 10. So here I might approximate that my lambda is 10 because of big skew. And the second peak out here is going to influence that as well. making the lambda slightly bigger, or the mean slightly bigger. So then you could go ahead and do some modeling based on the fact that you're assuming that this one is Poisson.